Hi, Graham Monday from Brighton Bear Weekend, and I have the privilege of interviewing all our wonderful contestants for Mr. Brighton Bear 2021. And this is Anthony. How are you doing? Hello. I'm not so bad. Thank you very much. You know, it's kind of like summer has arrived. It I live has. in the front, the beach is outside, and uh, I'm wafting around in caftans galore as one does and enjoying myself. So, hello. Oh. hello. Are you close to the beach? I'm very close to the beach. I look over the beach. So, uh, is it outside that window? Just I can't. It, it's in no, the, the back of the apartment is, is over here, and then at the front with the lounge and everything is is the full expanse of the beach. But it doesn't quite. We don't quite see the nudist beach, thankfully, because who wants to be looking at that? Quite frankly, um, I, I'm sometimes on there. So, <laughs> well, I'm sometimes on there. It doesn't mean I want to see it from here. <laughs> <laughs> And there's binoculars at my windowsill at the front have nothing to do with me. Thank you very much. What about the telescope? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's for other uses, obviously. <laughs> so I get the feeling that you've been in Brighton for a while. You're calling me old, dear? No, it's just some of our, about three of our other contestants have been only in Brighton for the last year. And I think you're maybe a bit of an old hand in the nicest possible way. Oh, what, love? What do you call me? <laughs> I didn't say old hag, I said old hands. I mean, I'll come on here, insulted left, right, yes, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I came back to Brighton four years ago, right. which was a joy to come back to, and it felt like home. I first moved here when I was barely a child at the age of 19 in 1991. I escaped the heteronormative world and moved to Brighton, where I grew up and discovered myself. I got a job at the Theatre Royal, which was just ideal for me working um, assistant front of house manager I was, and I was there for five years and I loved it. Pay nothing, but so many wonderful people around, such a great environment to then discover myself and grow up in. And loving Brighton as well, obviously, is it, there's no place quite like it in these aisles. Um, yeah, and, uh, and eventually I left to move to London for work and I was away for 21 years and then circumstances prevailed of where do I want to be and a friend who doesn't live here said why don't you move to Brighton because obviously he didn't want me near him uh he said why don't you move to Brighton I was like oh yes I should and it's the best decision I've ever made it was like moving back home it really really was and there were people here I'd known from 30 years before you know 21 years before wherever it is but uh, uh well 30 years before now uh people that I'd met in the meantime that were living here and new friends I made here as well it's just been a joy to be back here. And and how, how do you think the theatre world's coping at the moment? Awful. I do a bit of acting, uh, a bit of professional acting on the side. Thankfully, it's not my main source of income <laughs> because it's decimated so many friends of mine. So many that had amazing, wonderful, creative uh, companies and performances and plans. And of course, everything just got the rug pulled under. And not only that, no support. Whereas self self employed people were, yeah, hello, I'm on video. <laughs> See the talent. There you go. The talent has arrived and left again. Um, so have you, anyway. have you let the staff out the wardrobe? I know it's outrageous. Um, so many of you know uh, are, are deemed self employed, but of course didn't get any of the benefits that came in for a very very long time. It was soul destroying. But creative people are creative people. Um, we, uh, I belong to a theatre company called 368 Theatre Company and uh, uh, Nigel, who runs that, began doing a series of free online podcast murder comedy mystery dramas. Oh. Company, which includes some famous names. Um, not mine. Uh, they, uh, we, uh, yeah, we, we, sp we recorded in isolation, which means we recorded every single of our individual lines on our own with nobody to act to. So hoping that when it gets... All put together we're in the same sort of tone as the people that we're acting with because we know each other well you kind of have a you know have a, an essence and then he released 20 episodes during from last summer over 20 weeks which were just fantastic the Pogleywood murders if you want to look them up i'm in quite a few of them as different characters and then most recently he's released a series called moira moments which is a drama and um, I've got a little part in that, which hopefully has grown for the second season when that comes up. So uh, that's kept us all creatively enhanced because it's so difficult to otherwise. So many people are isolated, going through a tough time. But when your entire livelihood is just 
you know, out for grabs. The theatre shutting down is just being dreadful. But the small venues, all the rest of it, it's just being so harrowing for so many people. And the other thing is, of course, performance is belittled quite often, especially by our dear government. I shan't be political. Um, whereas what did everybody turn to for entertainment? They turned to music, TV, movie, podcasts, all the rest of it. And yet those that provide it aren't expected to have any support whatsoever. So thankfully that did change. But now it's cranking back into gear. Thank the heathens for that. That's all I can say. Yeah, I, I do think there is a real appetite for people to go back to the theatre. I've been back already, I've been quite lucky. And um, so, yeah, and it, it feels really safe. And it feels really good to be back there. And there's, not, there's nothing quite like live performance. I always think that. And it's the thing for performing. It feeds, you know, the audience feeds off the performance, feeds off the audience. Yeah. Like, different audience can change the tone of the show completely, you know, which is just mm. amazing. You got Wonder Woman on your wall. Oh, I definitely have. You can, they can't. They can't see this. I saw it earlier. It's kind of just off this way. Off, off Hang on. Way. Oh, there she is, Wonder Woman. <laughs> Marvelous. Yes, that is the uh, Linda Carter version. Naturally, is she one of your icons? As a child, I grew up in New Zealand. I was born in New Zealand and and grew up there till the early mid eighties. I just a daughter. I, whereas all the other little children were running around barefoot and fighting, running around in the dirt and the rest of it. I was pretending that my gum boots, as we call them, welly boots, were Wonder Woman boots, practicing my twirling in the back garden, practicing fighting out of to get out of a box like Wonder Girl. That was just one of my icons as a child. So, you know, never really conformed with these gender stereotypes myself. We <laughs> 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 wish. wish uh, which does lead me on to the fact that you're non-binary bear. I am ding dong bong ding ba dong bong bo bo by the bo 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 I get my gender, my pronouns wrong all the time, so don't worry about it. Um, yes, and that's something that I finally came to the understanding in myself earlier this year. Right. And um, I may be 40, 30, 20. <laughs> I may be of an age. And a lot of the we time, are... a lot of the time, I've been thinking that the younger people's things, I can't claim that for myself. You know, this is what the younger generation are bringing out and wonderfully so. But then when I actually let myself, I realized that is who I have always been from childhood, from birth. I've certainly been non-stereotypically gender, you know, confined in the way that I am and behave. And making that as a realization of coming out has then allowed me to actually be myself the first time in nearly 50 years so it's vitally important you can never ever be think you're too late for something or you know it's not for you because it's definitely if that's how you feel you're as valid as the next person as each other as everybody and that, that's a very positive message to say does it feel like it's a second coming out absolutely it feels like i came out at 16 with um Ah, I'm out, that's it, da, 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 da. that was in the late 80s, of course, underneath Section 28 and all that utter shit, so pretty vile, and been, you know, never had an issue with my, my sexuality all my life, but then suddenly realising I've been keeping myself under this other pressure and coming to terms with that and then going, away with you. See ya. So that was that, really. <laughs> So take no shit, you are what you say you are, and that's it, thank you very much. Yes, and yes, yeah, say that to the world, be, be who you want to be. Absolutely, I'm sure there's a song. <laughs> yes, I'm sure there is. I'm sure there's several. <laughs> and, and don't sing it because you can't afford a license. <laughs> oh, don't, words, don't worry, that's fine. So looking through your social media feed, you haven't been a well bear recently. I haven't. I've had some, I'm not going to go into things because this is not the place for it. No, no, of course. I've, I've had a little bit of a setback health-wise and um, what it's left me for a while was a hand that couldn't do that, but now I can, I'm happy. Um, it's, it, there's been some effects on my body. Uh, uh, not, you know, it's still fucking gorgeous, babe. Yeah. But just yeah. maneuverability and stuff. Shut up. <laughs> That's not what this is about. Um, it's still difficulty with maneuverability and, and whatever else. 
fact, I will be there on the 23rd if I have to come in in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> you may have to have patience with me that I'll need a little sit down and a cup of tea, well, not a cup of tea, a batter gin. A little gin, a little gin on the side and a, and a bar stool. Just to, just to do it in a little quiet space. But, you know, that's all come up recently and it's sort of come up in tandem with this happening. I was like, why the hell shouldn't I go for this? This is what a, what a, what a, what a great thing to do. And being a mate of Taylor's who won a couple of years ago and uh, feeling it's almost, you know, taking forward the expanse of the bear community, the, the openness and welcoming of the diversity of the bear community. And I guess in some ways, I represent a little bit of that, you know, just to show you may be part of a wonderful community, but you can still be yourself. There's no rules and laws about how you have to look, how you have to behave or anything else. It's all about openness and support for each other, welcoming those that just by, you know, when I first sort of dabbled with the bear community, they were open to this overweight, balding person who couldn't be bothered to shave. Suddenly, oh, can quite try to thank you very much. <laughs> 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 yeah. hey, anyway, but you know, you, 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 yeah, so that's all part of it, but also just being able to welcome whoever anybody is, you know, whether they've got a beard or not, whether they're fat or thin or or toned or yeah, cheekbones to die for, whatever it is, cow. <laughs> you sweet talker. <laughs> Naturally redheads, uh, anything like that, you know. <laughs> Anything like that. <laughs> I, I, I must say, for the bear community, I found this across the world. It's, it's the most welcoming, most friendly, and down to earth um, section. There is a kind of the whole the LGBTQ plus is different across the whole board, but I've always found the yeah. bears very, very welcoming. We all know there's a section for the cliquey that are you know negative, but then the rest of us are here to put them on. Yeah, yeah, and yes. Yeah, no kind of body shaming, which I think is really important. No, exactly, exactly. And the funny thing is, I've always had a bit of a, you know, battle with my body. The, the Elizabeth Taylor of the bear, bear, bear world, skinny, huge, up, down, whatever the place. And the funny thing is, um, well, it's not funny at all. There ain't no jokes here, kids. Um, the thing is that, again, coming out as non-binary and giving me the permission, permission to dress as I want to dress without borders, Mm -hmm. doctors without borders yeah i'm not fat i've got borders um is that i can wear what i want and i feel good and i can dress myself and feel good and uh, not we, we, we do have a photograph of you in a dress and i should put it up here so people can see and you do look fantastic i can wear what i like and uh that makes me feel comfortable and allows me to accentuate the lumps and the bumps and the, and the rest of it because there's a lot of those but to feel i can do this and these clothes fit me I'm not struggling into a belt or, you know, into jeans or into a, into a top that's not really me or whatever else. So, yeah, it's just a, a big, big step. And, and it's just it's just label. What's, what's the difference between a caftan and a dress? It's, it's comfortable. That's what it is. Well, I think somebody might have said this, and I've got no idea who, that we were all born naked and the rest was dragged. Yeah. Not the wisest thing that person said was they were fracking their own lap, 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 grounds. But, you know, let's... Uh, there's, there's, there's man drag, there's female drag, there's fetish Absolutely. drag, there's the whole list of it. Absolutely, it's all outfits, it's all, you know, all to make you feel good. That's what it is. Armour, whatever it is, that's that's what clothing is. And that's what I've always felt. Being slightly theatrical, that's what I've always felt. And talking about uh, clothing, I have to mention that we are sponsored this year by the wonderful bear107.com. Well, that's marvellous. What do they do? <laughs> they, they do t-shirts they do candles they do lots of bear key rings and everything have a look at their website can we find them at bear107.com you can indeed you're good at this it's like you've done this before God, I'm at that. i really am bear107.com <gasps> you do have a marvelous theatrical voice if you just record all my answer machine messages in the future <laughs> No, but you can buy things that I have acted on, so that's nearly as good. <laughs> You're Hoovian. Oh, I am a homosexual, indeed. Mm -hmm. Is that something that's followed you from childhood? I or... fell in love with it properly when I first came to the UK when I was about nine years old. And I guess it was something I, I recognised that was from back in New Zealand. So coming to this strange new world, I grasped it as my own and fell in love with it. And I still do. I still love it all unconditionally and passionately. And 
it's led me to meet the most amazing people, the most amazing friends um, across the world, given me the most incredible opportunities, as well as loving the programme itself, you know. So it's like, you know, if, if you have a, a passion or a fandom for anything, that opportunity to do positive move forward. And also the fandom is so creative as well. So many from it have gone into creative roles and, you know, flourished with it because they've been inspired or into science or into whatever else. Um, I just find it really, really positive. And again, such a diverse community. And since the resurgence of the programme, um, you know, it is extremely diverse. It used to be just a bunch of blokes, you know, at a certain, at a certain age. It's just all ages, all genders, all everything you could possibly think of, you know, and it's wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Do you have a favourite pre-2000, a favourite post-2000 doctor? No, I just, there's a load I love with merit and it's kind of like, I'm currently doing a watch along from the start and I've reached John Pertwee and I love him. He was the doctor in New Zealand when I was first remember watching it. Him and uh, Katie Manning as Joe Grant, who are just marvellous. Um, but I love Hartnell and Troughton and, you know, all of those along. So Weston McCoy is a favourite. And then coming back, it's just been amazing. But I do love Jodie. No. I love enthusiasm. I love the adventure that's back into it. I just love that passion that's there now. So, yeah, absolutely. When is the next series? Starting later this year. OK. It's, it's this episode because of, of uh, recording through all this. Yes, <laughs> that, that COVID thing. Yeah, we've got that to look forward to. It should be in the autumn or late autumn or whatever. So brilliant. So socially distanced Daleks. <laughs> <laughs> Another planet, please. <laughs> I did do my best Davros up in the hospital when they have to wheel you around and you're sat there just like. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, vote for Anthony. He's our New Zealander, non-binary bear, Wonder Woman lover, and he has a great voice. He's the kind of guy you want to go to the theatre with. So vote for him. Vote for him now. You know, do that clicky thing. www.brightonbearweekend.com. Vote for him now. You can only vote once, though. But you can vote again at the event at the Amsterdam on the 23rd of July in person. So be there, vote online, vote again, and I'm sure he'll be some, wearing some wonderful outfits. I got the suspicion he's going to be very glamorous. So, <laughs> so I'm going to say goodbye, but I'm going to leave the last word to our wonderful man. What do you want to say? Person, they, them, but I won't go into that. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. What do I want to say? Well, thank you to those that put me through to the final that's that's really a, a, a big surprise and it's just the fun of it the whole thing but just, you know there's no competition rivalry we're here to support each other so you know i won't come down to your face your face and smack your face if you don't vote for me <laughs> of course I won't. a friendly competition <laughs> let's look forward to good fun and that's what it's all about and supporting the community and that's the most important thing and i hope to see you on the 23rd Good. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you. Now, piss off. <laughs>